Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Every board has four corners. And whether it be a chamfer, a roundover, a broken edge, a Roman OG, or whatever you're gonna do, you have to do something with a corner. So let's take a look at some of the different ways you can dress it up. A board has two edges and two faces and two ends. And at each intersection with those, there is a corner. And corners by themselves are okay, but it's a point where you can make it look a little bit special. You can dress things up and make it something that matches you. And ever since the invention of two straight planes, we've had to figure out what exactly do we do with that intersection between them. And that has changed over the years. Things have come and gone from styles, and different people have had different things that they've liked. Kind of sounds like the rest of woodworking. Most of the time, your corner choice can be broken down into one of four different categories. Number one, you can have the sharp corner, or just slightly broken. It just comes to that corner. Number two, you could do a chamfer, where you lop the corner off at a 45 degree. Number three, you could round the corner and ease it over. Or number four, you could do something fancy. Ooh, we could do rounded beads, we could do molding, we could do Roman OGs. Hmm. You can sometimes even get an interesting date on a piece of furniture by the corners it has because they've come and gone through styles. With the arts and crafts version, you generally had a sharp corner or a slightly eased over corner. As things kind of shifted into the green and green style and the art deco style, you get a lot more rounded corners. Then in postmodern era, clean, the sharp corners kind of came back into face, maybe ever so slightly eased over. In the 70s, chamfers were kind of in style. In the 90s, everything kind of went back to the rounded corners. You can tell a lot from the 90s furniture with all of these perfectly rounded, smooth corners. Now things are kind of going back towards chamfering. You see that a lot more in furniture. But when it comes to fancy corners, you don't actually see much of a dating on those because there are so many different types and style to it. You might actually find a specific type of fancy corner that then fit into a particular style of French neoclassical or something of that nature. Out of all the tools in the shop, the one I use probably more than anything else for corners is the simple block plane. It can be held in one hand and it can very quickly do most of these simple things you need to do. A low angle block plane is a very versatile tool and in general, the place I use it most of the time is on the corner of a board. If I want just a sharp corner, I may have planed these two down and I have a sharp corner, but sharp corners tend to be a little bit delicate. So I'm gonna take a plane and basically just do one pass just to break that edge. And now I have this softened corner that from any distance looks like a sharp corner, but it is far more durable than that. And just with one quick pass like this, I can get that sharp corner look. A chamfer then is basically the exact same thing, just more passes. And often I'm just gonna count how many passes I do and I can tell how deep that chamfer is gonna go. Most of the time, I'm just gonna eyeball it, and there, I've got a really nice, clean chamfer on there. That's about 45 degrees, and anyone looking at it's gonna say 45 degrees. If I wanna round it over, I'd start with making a chamfer, and then I'd come in and I'd take the corner off of that, and I'd take the corner off of that, and I'd take the corner off of that, and then work your way around. And just like that, with one tool, you've got a nice, neat corner. And with one simple plane, you can make all of those corners very quickly and very effectively. Now you may want to come back in and sharpen them up with a card scraper on the rounded corner, or you might want to do something a little bit more detailed. But in general, that's all you need. Now I know some in my audience are perfectionists and that isn't quite accurate enough. And yes, it's never going to be perfectly accurate when you're doing it freehand. You can get it really close and you can get it visually close, but if you're ever gonna come up and measure it or you're ever gonna get it really close, you may want something that's a little more accurate than that. If you're just breaking a corner, honestly, you're not gonna get any more accurate than that. But if you wanna do chamfers, you could make wings that go onto a plane if you have something that you can attach on the side. And I made a video on making these a while ago and I can put them on either side. And with this, I can turn it into a chamfer plane and I can make the exact same chamfer every time at the exact same rate. You can also buy molding planes that have a chamfer or a roundover in them so you can get the exact same profile every time. This is one of the places where hand tools really shine because yes, I could set up a router to do this, but it's gonna take me far more time to set up the router and dial it in to make all the cuts as opposed to just taking a few passes with a quick block plane or even a setup molding plane that you just grab and make the edge you want. But a broken corner or a chamfer or a rounded corner isn't quite enough for you. You have that desire inside that screams out, I've gotta be me. Well, they made a whole bunch of planes to answer that question and you could put a whole lot of different corners on it. Molding planes are like magic. 
They only do one thing, but they do that one thing really, really well, and they do it over and over and over again. So if you have a corner that you want to do all the time, you might want to make a molding plane that fits your style, and you can just grab it and go and have just as easy a cut, but have something fancy. But if you don't want all those molding planes, Stanley made the combination plane. It's 55 planes in one, or 45 planes in one, or 50. It's got a lot of different cutters it can put in there. One plane can now do them all. All of those profiles can be done by a combination plane. And a lot of these are dedicated to a specific shape of corner. A combination plane can be very fiddly to set up. It's got all of these knobs and buttons. This is the Stanley number 55. It is known as the king of hand planes because it just, it kind of like does everything. And uh, yeah, it takes a little bit to set up, but once you do, you can make any of those cutting profiles with it. With just a few passes, I can take the 55. And we're gonna start close, work our way back. We can get a very distinctive and very beautiful OG without much difficulty at all. Or I could put a beading cutter on there, this is the Stanley 50, and we can create a small bead right on the corner. Have that nice little shape. And then I could even take it one step farther, turn the plane around and very carefully And that can give you a fully beaded corner, which is a little bit delicate, but really kind of beautiful. After those, the sky is the limit, and you can really make all sorts of crazy things by then combining different cutters. So you could have an OG on one side and a bead on the other. You could even put simple chamfers at different angles. They don't have to be at 45, they could be at something else. Or you could have them at different angles on different sides of the boards. And yeah, there are lots of ways you can make a corner. And there is no right or wrong. There are some that go in and out of style, and there are some that really don't. They're just kind of timeless. Corners are an easy place where you can put a distinctive look on an entire piece of furniture relatively easily. You can kind of create your own style by having your own type of corner because there are uh, pretty much an infinite way of making a corner. So it's a really fun place to experiment and try different things and see what you like. See what pops to you and be like, ooh, yeah, I like that. Ooh, no, I don't like that. I want to try something different. You can make it your own style and make it distinctive. And then once you find something you really like, you could actually make your own molding plane that is your exact corner that no one else has, and it can be your own thing. Or you could be like me and just uh, go at it with chamfers. Because, well, in all honesty, chamfers are what separate us from the animals, right? Well, I've never seen a squirrel do a Roman OG, though. So I hope you like this. If you do have any particular questions, thoughts, or ideas, or a particular corner you like that I didn't talk about, let me know those in the comments down below. I do like reading through those, and I often get a lot of interesting ideas. Personally, I like to experiment and try new things and uh, see what we come up with. I also want to say a huge thank you to everyone who does put a comment down below. Thank you! You are helping out the channel. Anytime you put a comment down below, you hit the like, you comment, and you subscribe and share. Thank you! Um, really, you are helping us get in front of more people and helping the channel grow. That means a lot. If you want to take it one step farther, there are a whole bunch of names scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who are quite literally keeping us going. We are funded by you, the viewers, so thank you. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Patreon, we do have special perks for that, as well as members here on the channel where you can become a member directly through YouTube. A little join button down below, you can do that. If you want to find out information about those, well, you know what to do. <laughs> I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh no, I'm getting backed into a corner. Testing.